Next thing I want to introduce you to, right, is a new tool that I picked up. Actually, I had it for a while, right? It's called the, uh, it's by high, it's by Handtech, right? Um, it is the uh, JH 100 right? It's, yes, it's a Chinese brand, but it works, right? This is basically the basic box. It comes in a nice, pretty package for a little bit more money, but I didn't need it because I'm not gonna use the box. I just want the transducer basically because I already know how to use it, right? You can check um, on AliExpress for this and it works really well, right? As, as I said, I've had it for a while, but I decided to make a video because guys keep asking, right? So in the box comes a pressure transducer, right? You get a little cert from China. You get a memory card with the instructions on it, memory stick, sorry, with all the instructions there. You get a charger, right? I think it's they rated at 3.7 volts or something like that. It's just a charger, but keep the charger and use it for this, right? So what I did, right, I modified mine and I put a different quick fit and quick connect on it because the one that comes with it is it, crap. You can't use it on anything else. So what I did, I modified it to use it for any of my um, quick connect like this, right? So... Let's, let's go to the box and see what else is in the box. And then, we, right, so it doesn't come with this battery. I had to purchase this. This is an 18650. Because of issues with customs, they do not ship it with, but, um, with the battery in. So you have to purchase, right? Um, you could get this from any uh, one of your, say you have a power tool, or you could just go to the store and, and buy it, basically. So, and then have different lengths. So make sure you get the right one. Right, it come with uh, BNC, the BNC, right? So this is used with my scope, right? If you have a snap-on, probably you can use a BNC to the banana jack and, you know, do what you gotta do. It also comes with a charger, right? It comes with, right, so this is the fitting that it came with initially, right? And I removed it, I did not like it because as I said, it only works on one, you know, only one type of connection and I want it to be, you know, where I can use it on multiple stuff. So I just took it off. Just be careful when you're taking it off, right? This is the transducer right here, this piece right here, right? And this piece was onto this, right? So you just make sure you take it off and be careful how you take it off because you end up damaging the transducer, right? Let me put it back in the picture. So it comes like this, right? This is just a standard um, quick connect, but I didn't go with this one because what I noticed, this one has like a smaller hole and then I have to like keep this open in order for the pressure to pass, right? Which this one now is basically, I don't know if you can see, it's, it's, the hole is basically not there. So I want a free flow, go straight to the transducer. I don't want anything to, you know, interrupt the pressure from entering the transducer. Right, it comes with the connection for the spark plug. You have O-ring on it. It also comes with a screw, some other fittings, depending on the spark plug that you have in the hole, you just use the adapter and screw it in. Try not to over tighten these things because they will get stuck in the down the cylinder and it will be a pain to get out. Right? So I also it came with a hose. I didn't like the hose what I did. Um, I modified the hose, it was really long, right? Um, what I did, I put a quick connect on this and I modified this by one of the shops that do um, hose fittings, right? So I can just quickly snap on and I'm good to go, right? As I said, the fitting that comes with it, it sucks. So it, I actually just modified it to take it off, right? So again, you, you, may, you may ask like, what's the sample rate with this one, right? According to Handtech, the real-time sample rate is like one GS plus GS A per second, and it's around 300 bucks on AliExpress. I mean, for bang for the buck, it's not bad. I mean, you could go and purchase WPX 500. I don't have that kind of cash to spend on that transducer. How many times do I use it? It's like between 900 to 1300 for WPX, 
right eventually one day i may purchase one i might get the diesel one especially you know but which will be a higher rating but for now this works i have enough transducers to get by right i can check insulin running compression cranking compression um i can check vacuum i can do a lot of stuff with these things fuel lines transmission they got um, oil pressure anything we do with pressure i can get by with my transducer kits right so let's talk about the transducer now right as i said this is hand tech setup right it's a bnc the bnc connector so it comes out it's a charging port it takes like four hours to charge right um and it lasts long to me right it's the power button right here and here now you see they have the little in cylinder pressure waveform right the blue is the expansion the green is exhaust the yellow is intake and the pink is compression right so what you gotta do is you gotta remove the it comes with a screwdriver too you gotta take this off you gotta insert the battery so this is more less for like guys who are doing advanced diagnosing or who like to get into it i mean at any day you know you look for you know not the, just a cheaper way to do things but you know we want to be able to diagnose for first and foremost diagnose the vehicle and by diagnosing vehicle you have to have good tools and so far this tool has been working real good for me i've been i've done a few vehicles with it and it's actually really good you know for the for the buck i mean it's 300 dollars plus shipping and handling straight from china it got here like within two weeks and it's been working real good i mean you could buy this i'm not saying this is better than the pico in no way in hell i would say that but at the same time or the ats transducers but for the bang for the buck it does what it's supposed to do and you could buy this like three four times for that money you know so have i tried it on um have i tried it on the transmission and stuff like that no i've tried it on the fuel lines and i've tried it on the vacuum and insulin the exhaust that's what i've tried it on so far All right so you power on like this it comes on the lights comes on right when it's charging it is still blue and this is the ratings right here so the red range is minus 15 to 500 psi or let's say 34.5 bars right um and you have a you can zero it right here let's press the zero and it also do zero um the green range is minus 15 to 50 and the blue range is minus 2.5 to 5. so you ask yourself what range would i use for cranking or running um, pressure right so i will use the red range so you just have to press the range like this and make sure it's on red um when it's on the red now you're able to hook this up zero it before you put it in and you basically go and do cranking or running compression using this oscilloscope and you take a capture and then you use it to analyze um what else the green range is for let's say a smaller psi rating which is up to 50 so what would i use that for probably fuel right um i will use it for fuel lines but i really won't go use the 50 because let's say a fuel a fuel pump kicks out like between 45 to 50 55 psi if it's gdi it might kicks on to like let me say 70 psi so i will leave it on red you know regardless i'll just you know make my little small changes and if i'm doing vacuum right as it stays minus 2.5 to 5 psi but i probably would use the green to do vacuum so what can i use this for as i said crankcase pressures i modify certain things on my tools so i can use it also right um as i said not everybody got the the cash to pay for certain things matter of fact let me get my other adapter so i can show you what i did also All right so i got my other adapter so this is what i rigged up to do fuel right it just uh t connect i had some um adapters and i much i like grind it down so i could fit it into um the fuel line and i have the smaller pieces and stuff like that as i said you could go and purchase it it's up to you you could go and purchase the high-end stuff but you know i'm just showing you how i use things around you know that 
I have laying around instead of going buying things. So I made an adapter for fuel. This is that. And when I'm doing, when I want to see what I know about blow by and stuff like that in the crankcase, I modify some old caps from different vehicles, right? So this is Nissan. This is I can't remember Toyota, right? I just put some quick connect and a little, um, you know. A little tread seal and stuff like that and glue I bore a hole in it and basically this is to measure pressure on the through the oil cap right so I can measure the measure those things right um, what else did I do I also have some like clear fittings or clear holes where I can measure crankcase pressure so that I can measure the block right you want to see a waveform uniform and as I said I have the one for the vacuum tap Right, this is to measure vacuum. I just take off probably the pull solenoid um, holes or even the one for the EGR. Yeah, I could tap up anywhere on the manifold and get proper pressure. So you know, always remember to take your take it off so you don't run the battery down. Right, so I just decide to show you, you know, give you a little preview of what I use to measure insulin pressure. I'm gonna take you out to the vehicle and show you how I use it, how I set it up, and how I zero it, right? Um, this is straightforward. I mean, I have videos up with that. They have other guys who have videos up, like GL um, Diagnostics and, and this other guy. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But these transducers are not bad at all. As I said, it's, you can get it from eBay, Amazon. You just got to be careful. You know, it's, as I said, cheap Chinese, you know, transducers. But it works. Once you know how to use it and zero it, and as I said, I'm going to show you on the on a vehicle how I use it to zero these transducers, so you can get so you can maximize it, right? So that basically comes in this kit. You can buy the the full kit with all the blow molding and all that good stuff. I don't need all those things. I have other things, right? Um, I have other things I can use, so I didn't need all that casing just to walk around with it. I'm going to store this probably in a a little pouch or something like that where I could just get access to it real quick right so yeah, has a mobile diagnosis um, if that's a word um, technician you know these are some of the tools that I use to diagnose so let me take you out of the vehicle and we're gonna jump on this vehicle here this is an actual T32 right so we're gonna pop on the pressure transducer and see what capture we get and what it looks like right? gonna remove the number one coil Ready to the bolt out. I'm just trying to get this off. Alright, so I'm just gonna pull this number one coil out. And right, I'm gonna use it as a dummy so I can get a sink. And I'm going to get a light because it's kind of dark in this area. So let's put a light here so you can see better. I hope you see better. Right? I'm not sure if it helped, but supposed to all right so I got number one coil out I'm gonna take off the spark plug because I gotta put the let's see I gotta put the pressure transducer in, in the spark plug hole right so what does that do sorry that measure the basically the pressure the cranking pressure or the running pressure or the um Great tall pressure that's in the cylinder, and I can use that to analyze um, data. I can analyze data from it to the kind of narrow down if I have that like, issue with my timing, if I have a problem in that particular cylinder. Um, what else can I use it for? I can use it for a lot of things. I do use it for a lot of things, right? Um, misfire counts, things of that nature. So, yeah. Right, so we pull the plug out. So I got the plug here. Let's put this to the side. Let's put that there. So I'm gonna insert the holes that I use. This is as I explained to you earlier. Um, I modified this hose, so basically I have no straight up valve in it. So I'm gonna just you know hold it down. Make sure that it's you don't have to over tighten this, you just gotta turn it screw it down and it will, that should be it. Alright, so that's that. 
So now I will need a sink on number one. So I'm going to use this coil. I'm going to hook up my spark tester here so I can get number, sink on number one. Let's get our hands on that. So we don't gotta set it to anything, but I'm just gonna rest it here. Just hook it up to the ground. Doesn't matter where. You just want to make sure that you know it doesn't fall on the belt or lose the ground. All right. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up the pressure transducer, basically the AKA uh, Pico knockoff, but it works like I said. I'm just gonna hook it up like this. In fact, let's take it off. I had it charging for a little while, so so we just gonna hook this up. I modify the the fittings like I explained to you in the video, so I can basically get a free flow, so you can hit the transducer. All right. Next thing I'm gonna do is hook up the scope. I'm gonna hook the scope up. I will basically put a cord in, so you can. See what I'm using. All right, so with the pressure transducer hooked up and the, um, my spark tester hooked up, right? I'm just making sure that this is located on the ground, right? Somewhere on the ground. I'm gonna sink off this to the sink and put that on. So I'm gonna hook up my scope real quick. And I will turn the camera back on after. Alright, so I was able to get a quick capture of this vehicle, right, with a pressure transducer and basically the signal. So I'm just going to zoom in using my fingers. So the red trace is the signal and the blue trace is the pressure waveform on cylinder number one. Alright, so in the blue trace you see my, basically my running pressure and the red trace will be my sink, right? On number one so what I did is I went into it on number one right I removed the spark plug the coil and I put my pressure transducer in number one so not too bad so number one um, pressure basically running pressure here will be my inlet where my in valve my inlet valves are closed and create compression right so this will be when I'm going up to top dead center relatively and here will be my expansion stroke and here will be my vacuum right I don't I'll be in um, expansion stroke because I don't have no spark happening here so this is not my power stroke here will be my exhaust and here will be my intake and then it keeps going over and over right so from that peak of that tower to this tower is 720 um, degrees so that's why you see the you know and every little stroke you see is like I believe that is what 30 right so I just gotta line it up better but as I said I'm not gonna go fully in depth in this I just wanted to show you how the pressure transducer works right um, to get a capture and you can you know use this for anything you can try to diagnose a vehicle on the go right as I said I'm doing it with the H the H scope 502 um, you know, you can do it with any scope you have, right? I tried to do it with the uh, die tech earlier, but I'm still trying to get used to that die tech, right? And this was relatively, you know, easy, quick, to the point. So, yeah, I hope you like what you saw. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, you know. Um, you could go on AliExpress and stuff like that and see if you get that um, pressure transducer. And, well, you know how it is with the H scope. Right, shout out to the, the team on the Telegram, you know. And yeah, that's what's up. So until next time, take it easy.